Okay, so the first um, social Trinitarian view we're going to look at is called um, unity of divine essence. Three persons united by one divine essence. So um, the way to think about this, and really this derives from Aristotelian philosophy, which uh, makes a distinction between um, the 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 essence of something and then its accidents or outward features. Okay, and one way to think about this would be to say um, uh, the idea of say an, an igneous rock. Okay, my understanding picture of it, igneous rock. My understanding is that igneous rocks uh, are formed from lava. So when a volcano explodes, um, lava comes down and eventually it cools and it forms into igneous rocks. That may or may not be true. Let's just assume that it is. An igneous rock then uh, is any, any rock that has the same essence that is uh, being formed of cooled lava. Right? So any example of an igneous rock is still is going to be an igneous rock because it has the same essence, the same formed from lava-ness. And so you can have lots of different examples of an igneous rock. In fact, I think um, igneous rocks were very popular for using in arrowheads. Um, uh, ancient and pre-modern peoples would use um, this rock because it's very sharp and glossy for arrowheads. Right, And so you could... That's a, it's an arrowhead right there. So you could have an igneous rock that's uh, really big, something so large you could climb on, right? So here's an igneous rock for climbing. Here's an igneous rock for hunting. And here's an igneous rock for your rock collection. It's small and it's pretty. Okay. All of these rocks share um, the same species, the same essence. They're all igneous rock. Okay, and yet each one of them is clearly different, right? Uh, the uses and the possibilities of an arrowhead are much different than a climbing rock, which are much different than a you know rock for your rock collection, right? Those, they're 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 different size, different shape, they're they're easily distinguishable, and yet they all share a certain essence, a certain um, igneousness. Okay, well. The, these types of unity of divine essence or um, same genus type versions of the social trinity will say that something similar is happening with God, right? So there's a divine essence, something that only God possesses, right? Uh, and classically, we would think about these things as uh, these attributes as things like eternality, omniscience, omnipresence, all of the things, all of the attributes that only God has, right? Uh, so anywhere you see somebody or something and it's omniscient, you know that that's God. That's divine, right? Only, only God has omniscience. And yet, there are three persons that possess this divine essence, right? There's one person who uh, come, flies into uh, our world, who's sent into our world to accomplish a mission and through uh, death save us, right? But that person, that person uh, is eternally omniscient, omnipresent, omni good, omni benevolent, omni what have you. All of the things that you can say tr are true about God are true about this person who uh, who who comes into our world. Likewise, um, there is a person whose uh, very being is actualization and energy, like, like just dynamism. Like wherever this being is, there's, there's action happening um, and, and fulfillment happening and, and life and redemption, okay? And this person is omniscient, omnipresent, only, only God can be, and yet we call this person the spirit, right? Different from the sun. The sun flies into the world, the spirit actualizes, energizes, fulfills, uh, teaches, guides, does, 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 action, action, action. And then uh, there's a person with a divine uh, essence uh, who directs and sort of uh, oversees, wills, um, and that person too shares this, om om this omnipresence, omniscience, uh, omnibenevolence, things that only God has, right? And so they're easily distinguishable from each other, but, but all three persons have one unifying nature, the divine nature. 
and a nature that is absolutely unique to only one being, God. So the oneness there? Only one being can have uh, these attributes in this nature. And so even though these are easily distinguishable persons, they all share in the same, what uh, the Greeks called homoousias, same substance, same essence, uh, same stuff. And the, the reason that's important is because a lot of times when people hear like a, um, a unity of divine essence example, they'll be like, well, it, they'll think, well, yeah, but there's so many different possibilities for igneous rocks. You know, you, you can make arrowheads, you can have a climbing wall, you, can have this, you could make a statue out of igneous rocks. You could, I don't know, maybe you could even, I don't know if this works, but maybe you can make them so hot they turn back into lava. I don't know. Um, but there's, there's an infinite number of possibilities for igneous rock. There's only three persons of the Godhead. And doesn't it seem like, you know, like why does it, why, why are we, how is God really truly one? Does it, doesn't it seem like Jesus is on like a different, Jesus is doing different stuff, thinking different thoughts, intending different things. Doesn't it seem like that's possible? Um, typically here, a person who, goes with this view is going to say, well, hold on a second. If you know that God is all loving, right? Then even though you have one person, the Trinity that's coming into the world, that person still exemplifies the all lovingness that only the divine being has. Only the divine being can express. And that's the same exact all lovingness that the director has. It's the same all lovingness that the actual actualizer has. Um, and so their wills are actually one will because they're animated by eternal and perfect love. And you could do this for all the attributes and all of the persons of the Trinity. This is similar to Karl Barth's repetition, uh, the repetition of the modes of being, where even though there is a clear threeness here, if we start to think through what that threeness entails, yeah, Jesus is the one jumping in to save everybody, but Jesus is doing it for the same in the same spirit, love, reasons that's shared by God. God, God, the Godhead shares in perfection and eternality all of the will and all of the love and all of the, the aspects of any one person of the triunity. Again, your mileage may vary. Um, I, I personally, this one, I've, I've tried to motivate it, but it, it, it seems a bit odd to me uh, that there should be this one essence out there that somehow admits of only three uh, tokens or three persons. Uh, that, that seems strange to me. I, why, why is it that, um, for whatever reason, there's all these different essences, right? There's the essence of rockness, the essence of humanness, essence of treeness. And all of these can have, you know, millions, an infinite number of tokens or examples. Why is the divine essence only admits of three? Father, Son, and Spirit. It seems weird to me. It doesn't seem like there's any reason for that. Um, but... At least it makes sense of the fact that there is a clear distinction between fa Father, Son, and Spirit, and yet at the same time holds them in unity of divine nature, attributes, etc. So, there you go.